Good afternoon, everyone. This is Eric Payton, Introduction to Materials Engineering Chapter 9, Phase Diagrams. Issues to address today. When we combine two elements, what is the resulting equilibrium state? In particular, if we specify the composition weight percent copper and weight percent nickel and the temperature, then answer the questions, how many phases form, what is the composition of each phase, and what is the amount of each phase, the weight percent of each phase. Okay. So phase equilibria and solid solubility. <clears throat> so a solution is just a solid, liquid, or gas uh, solution, and it's a single phase. A mixture, however, is more than one phase. And the, sol the solubility limit is just the maximum concentration uh, for which only a single phase solution exists. So in this example, let's ask the question, what is the uh, solubility limit for sugar in water at 20 degrees C? So we're looking at this temperature right here, and what is the solubility for sugar at 20 degrees. So we just move across here to the boundary and we go down to pull the, whoops, the composition. So the composition is 65. So the answer is 65 weight percent of sugar. And at uh, 20 degrees C, if the composition falls below 65, uh, weight percent, <clears throat> you're going to go to a syrup. If you go above 65, you're going to have a syrup, plus you're going to have some solid sugar. <clears throat> so, uh, components and phases. This is just terminology now. Components are the elements or the compounds which are present in the alloy. So, <clears throat> uh, aluminum and copper are components in this system. <clears throat> now the phases that are present, these are the physical and or chemically distinct material regions that form. In this example, this aluminum copper alloy, the phases are alpha and beta. So the term phase is not just confined to phases of matter, like gases, liquids, solids, and phases. Those are the four main phases of matter. But this definition is a bit broader than that. The phases uh, may be identical in, in, in chemistry, uh, but we might have a different physical structure, like... Um, um, a different crystal structure. For example, uh, alpha phase is copper rich and you have a beta phase which is aluminum rich in this case. <clears throat> so the beta is light and the alpha is the dark phase. All right, so the effects of temperature and composition. So we're back to the simple uh, sugar water phase diagram. Now let's try altering the temperature, and this can change the number of phases present. So let's take a path from point A to point B. So we start out at 20 degrees C and a composition of 70% sugar in the water. We leave that composition constant, but then we raise the temperature of that two-phase and we can end up with 100% syrup or liquid solution 
here at B. So at 100 degrees C, at the same composition, we have all syrup again. So now let's take that path from B and go back to D. Now we can go back into the two phase region of liquid plus solid. Oops. Um, and liquid plus solid, we are at 90% uh, and we're back into two phases. So the criteria for solid solubility simple system here with nickel and copper as we discussed in previous chapter with the Hume Rothery conditions if we have similar or I should say the same crystal structures here oops same crystal structures and they're both FCC and very similar electronegativities 1.9 and 1.8 and very similar atomic radiuses. Uh, both these, um, uh, these are all close enough to where we can get high mutual uh, solubility. And so in fact, nickel and copper are, are totally soluble in one another. And this, this is for all proportions of, of nickel and copper together. <clears throat> so phase diagrams, indicate uh, the phases as a function of temperature, composition, uh, and, and pressure. P is pressure. Uh, uh, however, for this course, we're going to look at binary systems. So we're only looking at just two of these three components. So we're only looking at uh, temperature and temperature and composition. And we are disregarding the uh, pressure. We're assuming that uh, we're at one atmosphere for all of this. So this is called a binary system. Binary system, two components. And this is what the phase diagram looks like for copper nickel. And um, so uh, on the x-axis here, on the far right, we have 100% like pure nickel. And on the left, we have 100% pure copper. So this is the temperature of, this is the melting temperature of pure copper. And this is the melting temperature of pure nickel. Just by going down through, down through here, it goes from liquid to solid at that temperature. So, there's two phases uh, in this. There's a liquid, and then there's an alpha, and that's it. Uh, but there are three phase fields. We can have a liquid, we can have a liquid plus alpha, and then we can have just alpha. So this white region in here is kind of like a, a slushy zone here, where it's partially liquid and it's partially solid. And then as you continue to cool, then, it, then the, that slush goes to 100% solid. <clears throat> Another term here uh, to introduce is isomorphous. So isomorphous just means that we have a single uh, phase. Um, and the system is binary. We have two components, copper and nickel. And so isomorphous again it means that we have complete solubility of one component in the other. Single alpha phase exists from all the way from zero to 100% nickel. This alpha phase exists all the way across here. We don't have any other solid phase that we're introducing to the system. So that's considered isomorphous. Now on to the phase diagrams. We're going to determine the, uh, the phases present. Okay, the rule number one is if we know the temperature and we know the C0, which is the overall, O stands for overall composition, then we know 
which phases are present. <clears throat> now let's look at this as an example. At point A, which is at 1,100, and at 60% weight percent nickel, um, that means it's 40% uh, of copper, by the way. In here. So it's got 60 of nickel. At this point A, we have a single phase, which is alpha. Another random point here I'm just pulling off is beta, uh, is at point B, which is at a higher temperature at 1,250 degrees C, and it has a weight percent nickel of 35%. And in this region here, we have two phases. We have liquid and alpha, because we're inside this little white area, and that is liquid plus alpha. Now we're zooming in a little bit closer in on that area in the phase diagram. So now we're just looking at the region between 20%. Uh, we're looking at the region here between 20% and 50%. <clears throat> so the second rule, if we know the temperature uh, and um, and the C0, we can determine the composition of each phase. So let's take, as an example, point A right here. So the temperature at point A, um, this, is, this is given, is 1,320 degrees C. And in this area, we have only liquid present. So what is the composition of that phase? Well. It's just 35 weight percent nickel. Pretty straightforward. Cl, which is the composition of nickel, is equal to the overall composition. So that's 35%. Now let's go down here into the cooler area here at uh, 1,190 degrees C. We're all solid, and we have only a single phase present, and that is also <coughs> 35 weight percent. Now it gets a little bit more tricky <clears throat> when we're in the two-phase region at this point B. So in this region, we have uh, both liquid and alpha. And we're going to draw this black line here, which we call the tie line. And this is also called an isotherm. We're drawing a line for one temperature, and we're seeing where it intersects the edges of that phase region. And then we drop down vertically to get composition at that point. So the composition of the liquid of this you know, slush of liquid plus alpha, the composition of the liquid at that point in time is 32%. The composition of the solid in that slush at that point in time is 43 weight percent nickel. So the third thing we can determine is what is the weight fraction of each phase. Again, we know the temperature and the overall composition, we can get the weight fraction of each phase. So here, we still use the tie line that we had from before, and we're still considering at this 35 overall weight percent nickel. <coughs> at TA up here, we all have all liquid, so our weight uh, our weight percent liquid is 1. So we have 100% of liquid up here, and we have 0% of alpha. At point D, we have 0 weight percent liquid and, one, and 100 weight percent of alpha. So we have all alpha at that point. Pretty straightforward. Now in this two-phase region at B, we have to do a little bit of a ratio calculation here. 
So S is just the length of the line, uh, of the tie line, between the uh, solidus and the overall composition over the total length of the line, which is R plus S. And then uh, if we just pluck those numbers off, we have the uh, 43 minus 35 over 43 minus 32. And that gives us a weight uh, percent liquid of 0.73 or 73 volume percent, or I'm sorry, weight percent of liquid. And then <clears throat> the weight percent of alpha is R over R plus S. So it's the, the length of the line opposite of the uh, solid or liquid or phase, I should say, that you're trying to determine. Opposite. So the tie line, this is called the lever rule, by the way. The tie line represents, oh, actually, just back on that, that last one there. Uh, let's just do a, a reality check on that, that calculation here. So the weight percent liquid is 0.73. Does that make sense? Because if you, if, if you look at this point here, we've, we're only about 25% of the way through the cooling in this two-phase region. So that probably means that we're, we're only going to have, we're going to have less alpha and more liquid. And as you cool, we're, then we're going to get more alpha and less liquid. But since we're up here near the top, of the two-phase region, we have more liquid. And that's why the liquid is at 0.73 and the weight percent of the alpha is only 0.27. All right, that's our reality check. It's always good to do those uh, when you're working on these problems. So the tie line connects the phases in the equilibrium with each other and um, it's also uh, sometimes called the isotherm. So this is your tie line. Tie line right across here like this. All right. So um, what's the weight fraction of each face? Think of this as a teeter-totter. So if, uh, if you're closer to the top of this two-phase region here, uh, going to have a longer lever on this side, which means that the mass of alpha, you want to keep this in balance, the mass of alpha is going to be smaller uh, because since it has a longer upper arm. And so that is the length uh, S in this case. So uh, in order to keep this thing in balance, then the mass of alpha uh, times the length of it is equal to the mass of the liquid times the length on the liquid side, so that's R. So to keep that in balance, that's how it works. So the weight percent of the liquid is just the mass of the, of, of the liquid over the mass of the liquid plus the mass of the alpha. And that's equal to uh, S over R plus S or the composition of the alpha minus the overall composition over the composition of alpha minus the composition of the liquid. That's the total length of the tie line. And again, for the weight percent of the alpha, just take the um, length of the tie line opposite of alpha from alpha over the total length of the tie line. And you don't have to do both of these calculations because once you calculate one, to get the other one, since this is a binary uh, phase, the other one is just one minus the other one. So just pick one to do and then easily calculate the one after it. So let, let's look at cooling of uh, this copper nickel alloy and look at the microstructural changes that are uh, that accompany this cooling. 
So starting out, again, we're at 35 weight percent nickel, and we're at a high temperature here of about 1300, we're gonna have all liquid. And the weight percent of the nickel in that liquid is at 35%. At B, just start to precipitate out some solid of, of alpha in there, and the composition of those little alpha uh, precipitates are going to be 46%, and the surrounding liquid is still at 35%. And as we continue to cool now, the alpha, the composition of the alpha starts to decrease because we're going down this tie line here, going down this tie line. So now the solubility of nickel and alpha starts to decrease. So now our alpha composition is only 43% and our surrounding um, nickel <coughs> is at 32%. And now we're cooling further. Our alpha is now all at um, 36%, and the liquid composition is at 24%. So now we have much more alpha and a lot less of the liquid. Now at E, all of the liquid has been converted into solid, and we have 100% alpha, and the composition of the alpha is 35%. So it's the same as the overall composition. <clears throat> so what you saw previously was equilibrium cooling. And whenever you hear the word equi equilibrium in thermodynamics, you have to think painfully slow, ever so slow, everything is happening. Um, but in reality, that's not what happens. Um, <clears throat> in this case, what really happens here, you have something called coring. Um, so the composition of the alpha is changing as we solidify. The first alpha to solidify had 46 weight percent. As you continue to solidify, it keeps dropping, and eventually it reached 35 percent. So what happened to all that nickel that had first solidified? Well, what happened, because this is painfully slow, there was enough time for the, for the nickel that was in the center of here to diffuse out and get ejected into the into the liquid around it. But in reality, we have faster cooling rates. So the first nickel is at 46, then it goes lower and lower, lower, and the last alpha to solidify is less than 35 weight percent nickel. All right, moving on. The binary eutectic system. The binary means two components. So we're still on two components. And we're now talking about eutectic systems. So eutectic is Latin for easily melting. So a good example of a special composition um, is solder. And there is a uh, silver tin, or uh, there's a composition where the melting temperature is at the very lowest. And that's a special composition, and it only occurs at one, one composition. So that's why they make great, cop, uh, great solders, because we can use them without having to heat them up very much. So binary means tectic. Remember, easily melting. Uh, eutectic means easily melting. It has a special composition with a minimum melting temperature. And this purple line right here is tectic composition. And it has 
a melting temperature of only about 800 degrees C right here. And there are uh, uh, three single phase regions. We have either all liquid, um, <clears throat> and then we have uh, alpha plus beta down below. And no matter where you are in this phase diagram, you're going to have only three phases possible. And there's a limited solubility here. It isn't complete solid solubility like we had in the uh, previous example where we had the uh, all of the Hume-Rothery rules were uh, met. In this case, you don't have all the Hume-Rothery rules met for this type of system. And at the um, tectic temperature, which is Te, there's no liquid below Te. That's this horizontal line right here. Never have any liquid below that, no matter what composition you're at. And the um, composition at the eutectic temperature is Ce. The eutectic reaction at this composition, which is at 71.9 uh, weight percent silver, is all liquid going to alpha plus beta. And um, so that is actually 71.9 weight percent silver going to alpha, which is 8 weight percent, um, right here, 8 weight percent alpha and 91.2 weight percent of uh, silver in the beta. So the beta here is going to have, is going to be uh, very rich in silver and the alpha is going to be very um, rich in copper. Let's take this example. Let's take an example of this uh, lead tin. Lead tin makes a great solder of 40% um, uh, tin and 60% of lead. And at 150 degrees C. So 40% of tin, remember this is tin on the x axis here. This is 40 weight percent tin. And the first question of those, remember those three questions uh, we're going to ask is, is what phases are present? Well, at 150 degrees C, guess what? The answer is alpha plus beta. So that's the answer to that question. <clears throat> now, second question, what are the compositions of each of the phases? So let's draw that isotherm to where it intercepts the alpha and then drop down to the composition. And there we have 11% of 11% um, tin in the alpha. And you have 99, you have 99% over here, you have 99% of the tin in the beta. The last question to answer, what is the relative amount of each phase? This is the weight percent of each phase. So let's use this tie line here. We're going to be looking at the length of the line, which is S. The length of the line, which is S, over the total length, R plus S. R plus S. So that is just the composition of beta minus the, the overall composition over the composition of beta minus the composition of alpha. And plugging those numbers, 99 minus 40, 99 minus 11, you get 0.67. So that's 67 weight percent 
is going to be alpha at this point right here. Now the weight percent of beta is the length of R over R plus S, R plus S, which is here. And plugging in uh, that, so that would just be overall composition minus alpha composition all over composition of beta minus composition of alpha, and that equals 0.33. So notice here is, um, as I said earlier, you only have to calculate one of these two. So the weight percent of beta could just be um, 1 minus 0.67. 1 minus 0.67 is 0.33. And that's how we're going to do it uh, later on. We're going to do that little shortcut. Let's look at another example of the same system of the lead tin eutectic system. And we're going to look at the same composition of 4060, but we're going to go to a higher temperature of 220, 220 degrees C. So let's draw a horizontal line, 220. We have what? We have two phases here, alpha plus a liquid. So we're in like the slushy here region, and we're below the eutectic temperature. Uh, I'm sorry, the eutectic composition. Second question, what are the um, compositions of each phase, phase compositions? Draw that horizontal isotherm till it intercepts the, um, the next phase that it comes across here is alpha. So that means 17 weight percent of tin is in that alpha phase and 46 weight percent tin is in the uh, 46 weight percent tin is in the liquid. So now let's look at the relative amount of each phase, the weight percent of each phase. So that is, again is the length of, for, so for alpha, which is um, on the left side here, so we have to go to the opposite line. So that means that that's the, the length, which is S, over R plus S. So 46 minus 40, 46 minus 17, that gives us 0.21 weight percent alpha. So the weight percent uh, of the liquid is just the, the line that's opposite the liquid. So that's R over R plus S. So that would be um, the overall minus alpha and the liquid minus alpha. So that's 0.79. Well, guess what? That's just 1 minus 0.21. So there we have the weight percent. So we've answered all three questions for example two. So the microstructural developments, we're going to look at the microstructural developments in a eutectic system. We're going to start out looking at, at a very, very uh, small weight percent of tin. But so room temperature, you have uh, polycrystalline with grains of alpha phase. Here we start out with 100% of liquid. And as we cool, we start to get some alpha. Cool further, we form all alpha. All alpha. And the composition of that alpha is just C, C naught, or C, uh, C zero, the overall composition. Now, let's go to a higher composition of tin. So let's look at what happens between 18.3% um, and 2%. So that's this area between these two red lines here. We're looking at this red line, this red line, so all this area in between here. And um, so the result here, again, we're all liquid, cooling, we're getting alpha solid particles forming in this slushy of liquid. Now all of the alpha has converted, and it's still just the overall composition of tin. And now we have uh, these little tiny uh, precipitates of beta in the alpha.
So that's what the microstructure will look like in this area here. All right, now let's look to see what happens when you're, um, when you're at the eutectic composition. So the eutectic microstructure is lamellar, is a lamellar structure. A lamellar, so the lamellar structure, so the eutectic composition is 61.9%. Starting out all liquid at high temp, and then immediately, without any uh, partial solidification, it it solidifies quickly to alpha plus beta. This is a this is a great uh, way to work with solder. You don't have to worry about partial cooling. It it will just cool and solidify very quickly, which is exactly what you want in a solder. So that this lamellae is composed of alpha plus beta. And the alpha is blue, beta is red. And what is the composition of the alpha and the beta? So the composition of the alpha is just the blue line here. Drop that blue line down, and you have 18.3% weight percent in the alpha. And the weight percent, I'm sorry, not the weight percent, the, um, the uh, composition of the beta is 97.8 weight percent N. And a micro, the microstructure of what that looks like is here. You have uh, these black, like zebra stripes, and of um, of alpha and beta. That's the eutectic microstructure. So at a much smaller scale here, as we see what's happening here, the, the lamellae is growing out of the liquid, and the beta um, is tin-rich, so it has to eject lead um, out of it. And uh, the alpha here is um, is lead rich, so it has to eject the tin out of it. And the faster the solidification process occurs, the finer these uh, lamellae become. So this the thicknesses of these phases become much smaller as you have faster cooling because there's just not enough time. To diffuse the, um, the the lead and the tin out. All right, so let's look at a composition below the eutectic composition. So this is for any region between eighteen point three and sixty one point nine. So we're looking at um, anything between here and here. So we start out with pure liquid. As we solidify, we start to precipitate out these alpha. And the alpha get bigger as we cool. And just above the eutectic temperature, the composition of the alpha is 18.3 and liquid is 61.9. And the weight percent of the alpha is S over R plus S, and the weight percent of the liquid, which is the green line, green line here, is just one minus that. Or you could just do R over R plus S. So it's 50% weight percent alpha, 50% of the liquid. And just below the eutectic temperature, we solidify out all of the um, remaining liquid into the lamella. And that is, since it happens instantaneously, then that's why you don't have any time to form like you know, large phases of one versus the other. It's just lamella phase that forms.
So we, we call this um, primary alpha, which are these uh, you know, blue blobs here. That's the primary alpha. And the eutectic alpha is uh, these blue lines in the lamellae. And the eutectic beta is the red lines in the lamellae. So hypoeutectic and hypereutectic. I'd like to introduce these terms to you now, where hypo is any composition below the eutectic composition, uh, but so and anything in this region is hypo, and anything in this region here is hyper. So the hypoeutectic, if we were to cool anything down through here, we're going to have primary alpha particles, and then we're going to get the lamellae at the, uh, below the eutectic temperature. So this here is the hypoeutectic. The hypereutectic, now we have primary of beta and we have eutectic um, alpha plus beta. So that's the hyper eutectic. <clears throat> now <clears throat> this phase diagram is a little bit more confusing but I'm bringing it up because I want to introduce a few more terms here. Uh, which are the intermetallic compounds. The intermetallic compounds exist as a line on the diagram, not as an area. This is because they're stoichiometric, i.e. the composition um, of the compound is a fixed value. All right, so eutectic, eutectoid, and peritectic. We talked about eutectic. This is uh, liquid cooling to form alpha plus beta and brought up the example of lead tin at 61.9 percent. Hectoid is a new term here and this is very similar except instead of cooling from a liquid to two solids we already have a solid and we're taking that solid and we're breaking it up into two separate solid phases. An example of this, which I haven't shown you any phase diagrams yet for this, is just gamma cools to alpha plus iron carbide. And this occurs at 0.76 weight percent copper. I'll show you some examples of that later. So that's eutectoid, which is a solid going to two other solids. A paratectic is a liquid and one solid phase transforming to a second solid phase. Again, we see this in the iron, iron carbide phase diagram where you have a solid plus a liquid going to a solid. Uh, example here is the uh, delta iron plus liquid going to gamma iron. Here's the copper zinc phase diagram. And I'm going to point out a eutectoid transformation here. And this is just a delta phase, the delta phase here, cooling down through here to a gamma plus epsilon phase. So that's a eutectoid, one solid going to two other solids. A paratectic transformation up here, sorry, paratectoid up here, and here we have. Um, two solids, gamma plus, I'm sorry, um, a solid plus a liquid going to a single solid, going down here to the delta. So that's a paratectic transformation. <clears throat> so let's look at the iron carbon. I promised you this. Looking at the iron carbon phase diagram, there's two important points in this phase diagram. Oh, and FYI, this 
the composition in this phase diagram only goes up to 6.7 weight percent carbon. It does not go all the way up to 100%. And that's because the rest of the phase diagram is not um, useful to us. And we've always just focused on this uh, area of the phase diagram. So two important points. You have the eutectic at alpha, liquid going to two solids. This is liquid going to gamma iron plus iron carbide. And the eutectoid solid going to two other solids is gamma. We also call this austenite, by the way. You have austenite going to um, alpha plus iron carbide. Alpha is um, also called ferrite, the iron carbon phase diagram. You have, um, you have alpha plus iron carbide. That's the eutectoid. And the, um, because we're going through a, uh, this horizontal line here, it's going to form that lamella. So anytime there's a eutectic or eutectoid, you're going to get the lamella structure always. Okay? So that is what the microstructure will look like. And um, that lamella, um, we give it a special name in the iron carbon, iron carbon phase diagram, and we call that perlite because it looks like I guess mother of pearl when you look at it uh, under a polished sample. It looks very beautiful. So those these are just alternating layers of alpha plus iron carbide. Alpha is called ferrite, that's soft, and it's soft because it has a low carbon content. And um, the uh, cementite, which is um, Fe3C, or iron carbide, that's very hard. So the combination of those two is called perlite. A hypo eutectoid steel. Hypo, as you remember, is below the eutect eutectic composition. And it's oid, meaning solid going to two other solids. So looking at the cooling of, of this um, austenite, or gamma iron, it's all austenite, and start forming precipitates of what? You start forming precipitates of alpha right in this area. And then that alpha starts to consume more and more of the austenite, at which point you're going to get all uh, solid, or I'm sorry, you're going to get all of that austenite transforming into perlite. All the remaining austenite forms perlite. And a microstructure of that is shown here. You have the pro eutectoid ferrite. Pro in this case, means um, the phase before the eutectoid temperature. So that's all the primary or pro, pro eutectoid ferrite. That's that light phase in here. And it's surrounded by the perlite, which is this darker gray phase here. And that is what used to be the austenite. All right, so let's look at the weight, uh, or first the composition of the, um, we're looking at the weight, the weight percent of alpha and the weight percent of the austenite. The weight percent of the alpha at, point, at that point there is just um, S over R plus S. And, Then if, if we look at the um, weight percent of the perlite, which is also just the weight percent of the austenite, that is S over R plus S, so 
the weight percent of alpha is S over R plus S. And so then the weight percent of the iron carbide is just 1 minus that. Because remember, everything in this area here, everything um, in this area here is alpha plus iron carbide. So this is the weight percent of the iron carbide. And so that includes the, um, the iron carbide in the perlite and the uh, weight percent. Okay, so let's just move on to the next one here. I think I covered that good. The um, hyper eutectic, hyper meaning above eutectoid point. We start out with all austenite. We're forming precipitates of iron carbide and as we continue to cool the iron carbide grows and grows and then all the remaining austenite converts to perlite. So the iron carbide, the weight percent of the iron carbide is just um, the x x over v plus x. That's the um, weight percent of the alpha. Remember, it's the opposite line. The weight percent of the alpha is x over v plus x, and then one minus that is the weight percent of the iron carbide. So the weight percent of the austenite ends up becoming the weight percent of the perlite. Same. So weight percent, that's why I wrote it here, the weight percent of the austenite equals the weight percent of the perlite. And then, um, so all we're left with having to determine now is what is the weight percent of the alpha, which is x, big X over big X plus V. And then 1 minus that is the weight percent of the uh, iron carbide. And the weight percent of the iron carbide includes the iron carbide in the proeutectic iron carbide plus the iron carbide that's in the perlite. So let's look at an example problem. We have a uh, 99.6 weight percent iron and 0.4 weight percent of carbon uh, in a temperature just below the eutectoid. So determine the following. The composition of the iron carbide and the ferrite, the amount of cementite in grams that forms in 100 grams of steel, and the amount of perlite and proeutectoid ferrite alpha in 100 grams of steel. Let's start with A. Remember, A is the composition of the iron carbide in the ferrite. So the composition of the alpha using the RS tie line is um, 0 0.022 weight percent of carbon and 6.7 weight percent of iron carbide. So going back to here, remember we're looking at um, a 0.4 weight percent. So that's this is point, point 0.4 right here. Remember, this is like a really small composite. This is only one one percent copper. So this would be like 0.5. So this is 0.4. So that's why we drew that line right there. So using the lever rule, we can determine B. Remember, B is the amount of cementite that forms in 100 grams of steel. So first thing we need to do is find the weight percent of cementite. So the weight percent of cementite is just the lever rule. You gotta do that. And so the lever rule is just R over R plus S. The opposite of where cementite is. Cementite is all the way over here to the right. So we need to um, find the length of the line on the other side. And that is 0.057%. So take that number and multiply it by 
100, this is 100 grams, and that's going to give us 5.7 grams of iron carbide in the 100 grams total. So uh, question C, going back, uh, question C was the amount, the amounts of perlite, sorry, the amounts of perlite and proeutectoid alpha in 100 grams. So again, this is a weight percent information that we need to get. So we've got to use the tie line. VX tie line just above the eutectoid and realize that the, the um, composition, uh, overall composition is being 0.4, we know that. The composition of alpha is 0 0.022, get that. And the composition of the perlite is also the composition of the austenite, um, and that's 0.76 weight percent. So the composition just above is also equal to the composition just below. So um, that's where we get this C gamma here of 0.76. So now we got to get the weight percent of the perlite. The weight percent of the perlite exactly the same as what the weight percent of the austenite was just above the eutectic temperature. So that's just Vx, I'm sorry, V over V plus X. So that's um, C, C0 minus C alpha over C gamma minus C alpha, or 0.512 weight percent. Again, we take that percentage, or we take that fraction, multiply it by 100, and now we have 51.2 grams of perlite in that 100 grams total. So in summary, phase diagrams are useful tools to determine the number of uh, and phases and types of phases that are present, the composition of each phase, and the weight fraction of each phase, given temperature and composition of the system. Secondly, the microstructure of an alloy depends on its composition and whether or not the cooling rate allows for maintenance of equilibrium. Now the important, important phase diagram, phase transformations include tectic, tectoid, and paratectic. And that's all. Thank you very much.